People who have dialed numbers written on bathroom stalls, what's your story? Do not post the number that you dialed or you will be banned. This includes fake numbers or rickroll numbers. If you post any of these it is a rule 4. I once added someone on Snapchat who had spray painted their name on top of a mountain I was hiking and they replied to my message with a who the fck is this like I was the asshole. There was a guy in my group of friends that annoyed the shit out of me. I made a free yard work by the mentally challenged sign and hung them up in Costco bathrooms numerous times for about 5 summers in a row. He would always complain of these stupid people calling him thinking he was a retard who liked to do yard work for free. Never did tell him it was me. Never dialed one myself but I answered a call one day from an unrecognized number. He was in a bathroom stall at Arby's at Reed for a long philosophical conversation followed closely by rough SX call. And my phone number. Now I didn't write it. But I guess word gets around. I found a business card in a phone booth printed cryptically with. If you don't call. You'll never know. And a phone number. Since I had time left on the phone card I called. And now I know. It was a pseudo-religious self-help cult trying to recruit people to seminars at their ranch in like New Mexico somewhere with promises of finding a new spiritual family. No thanks. The last thing I need is more family. I saw a number scratched on a table at a bar that said something like call Mike. He's been really mean. So I sent Mike a text telling him to be nicer and in response he sent me back several angry who the hell is this? Texts over the next few days. He's really mean. Open bracket. I was at a restaurant and they had the give one dollar to charity and put your name on this piece of paper we post on our wall. While waiting in the lobby for a friend. I saw one that had a name and a phone number with call me under it. I figured what the hell why not. Girl answers and I ask if it's xxxxxx. She says yes. I explain I'm in the lobby of the restaurant and her name is on the wall with her phone number. She doesn't believe me despite my best efforts to convince her I don't know who she is. Eventually she asks me to walk out of the front door of the restaurant. Which I obliged. And she says holy shit. Meanwhile I'm standing in a parking lot looking around trying to figure out who the hell is looking at me. She asked me to take the paper down and thank me. Apparently one of her co-workers told her that he did it and she didn't believe him. They worked in the area and frequented the restaurant. In high school I messaged one that was on the backseat of a bus that was going through a town that was a 30 minute drive from my town. I texted. Who is this? Your number is on the backseat of this bus they reply Greg. I told my classmate about it a week later since his name was also Greg. Sure enough. He holds out his phone with a text message from me in there. Found a number on the bathroom stall in a bar when you need a friend. When something great happens and you have no one to tell. When you want to vent. When you want to be spontaneous. When you need help getting home from a drunken stupor. Call R.I.P. Ryan. I cried and called to tell her what a great message it was and we both cried and talked for a few hours. I knew a guy that called a number written on her a $5 bill. He figured she must be a quality girl because it was a 5 and not a single. She had a great voice on the phone so they made a date. He played guitar in a popular local band. And there was a hip restaurant next to the club they were playing. So they arranged to meet before the gig. He figured they'd have dinner and then he'd impress the shti out of her with his playing. He was a truly fine guitarist. So he walked into the restaurant and looked for a girl in a pink dress. There was one. And she was enormous. So he slipped out before she saw him. So during the show, he sees the crowd part as the girl in the pink dress makes her way to the front, where she glares at him during the entire set. Afterwards, she screamed at him for standing her up. He felt a little guilty, but he said he'd felt worse if he'd had dinner with her and then dropped her. After all this, his warning was to not call numbers you see on currency. Not in a bathroom stall. But someone had once written one of my male friend's number on a classroom bench. A girl called him. They talked. And began dating. Eventually. A guy who had a crush on her beat my friend up. And that is how my friend lost his first girlfriend. 
When my friend and I were about 11 there was a public bathroom in the park where we had soccer practice and outside that public bathroom was a payphone and on that payphone was scrawled a number and above it the word sex. I don't recall ever paying for a call so maybe it was a 1-800 number. I don't remember. It was a recording of a woman's voice. I remember only the beginning. But I can hear it crystal clear. You wanna have fun? Yeah? And then a bunch of feminine giggling. We would hang up when the recording asked for a credit card number to continue the call. I think we were terrified our parents' credit cards would somehow get charged and we would get caught. Kid logic. We were our both straight females. But we still called that thing all the time. It was seriously the most risque thing I had ever done up to that point. And also probably for a long time afterwards. Sadly. I was at the bus stop and saw this text. If you are in deep shit. Call this number. I called the number cause I had like 30 minutes to bus. It was local small taxi company. I told him to come and pick me up. He saved me like 25 minutes of waiting. The guy was cool. And I even gave him solid tip. I was playing Jenga at a local bar with some friends. All the blocks had people's numbers on it. So we made a rule that you had to txt any number you pulled out. The first person I txtd sent me a picture of a pile of coffee beans labeled find the Kanye there was a tiny Kanye face on a bean in the bottom left corner. Never but I was in this English pub in Tokyo and the walls were pretty typical of an English pub. West Ham for Eva. Sarah's or SLT and so on. Then one said is anyone interested in joining our baseball team? Every Sunday at 11am with his phone number. He must have thought it was an actual message board. Bless. Kinda unrelated. But I took a picture of my snap code, basically like a QR code for snapchat accounts, using one of the display phones at Best Buy. I now have a random woman following me. An old sounding woman answered. Offered the best BJ in town. Asked her how much. Told me five dollars. I asked her if it was blueberry or blackberry jam. She called me a dumbass. Bossenberry jam dumbass. Those other ones are out of season. I got me a BJ. I used to call the numbers and inform the recipient of where there were not such nice things written with their name and number. They'd always ask what it said. I'd always reply that I wasn't sure they wanted to know. But they would insist. I would tell them verbatim in my radio announcer voice and listen to the shock emanate from the cell phone. They'd always ask me to mark it out. But I would tell them that I didn't have a pen or sharpie. Found my sister's number once and couldn't stop laughing. There was a flyer posted on a bulletin board at this coffee shop asking for your best Wookiee impersonation. The flyer told you to call and leave a message if they didn't pick up and the best one would win $25. I figured it was too good to be true so I called the guy and let him know what it said and where it was. He was wondering why he had gotten so many weird voicemails but appreciated the heads up. Dialed up a number scratched on a horse feed shed storage door, out in Loudoun County, Virginia, and Robert Duvall answered. He cautioned me to not use it again. Lest I could deliver him 255 lbg of horse and mule feed. It was written on a piece of paper way back around 10 years ago. It said call this number if you are struggling with life. I was 13. So I called the number. We never met but he had a really sweet voice and I we talked for about an hour. Gave me great advice about how the world can be cruel to gays like me but that the first future will get better. We never communicated after that. If I could meet that guy to thank him even for just a sec. I would. Thanks MR target that's what he wanted to be called i saw the number read hunger games hotline so i took a picture of it in case i ever wanted to call it a year later i'm on a school field trip coming back from dc when i tell my friend we should call this one number he says yes we dial it and we hear robots having sx when i was younger someone wrote for a good time call and my number on the playground slide People would call a couple times a week. Laugh and then hang up. It started to get annoying so I went to the playground to cover it up. 
Someone saw me doing it and called the cops saying I was vandalizing the playground. I had to explain to the cop that I was just removing my number so people would stop calling me. I went outside after watching a movie at the theater and someone had written their number in the snow that had collected on the back of my car. I texted it and it was just a random guy who went to my school. Never met him. But he saw the decal from my university and his buddies had dared him to leave his number there. Obligatory not me. But one of my best friends in college. It was our freshman year and somebody had written a number in the girls bathroom in our dorm. Half drunk. We pressured her to text the number and to our surprise she got a reply. It was another student. They actually ended up talking for quite some time and met up like a month later. They've been dating for 5 years now. I went to a gig and everyone who frequented this venue would write on the wall while queuing so me being drunk already decided I would ring one cause it said something amusing. Guy answers and I tell him where I am and that I was bored so I rang this number off the wall. We had a convo about who he saw and who I was seeing that night and due to me being drunk I sang a song by the band he went to see down the phone to him. Funniest Q bonding moment so far. Me and a few mates wrote one of our friends numbers in the portal you drop toilets at Glastonbury festival about 6 years ago. Every summer around festival season. He'll receive a good few calls from people asking if the guy wanting kinky bum sex is still available and if so where does he want to meet. His girlfriend hates us. Almost as much as he does. I called a number for a good time. Was greeted by a local pizza place. I proceeded to order two pizzas and at the end of the call discovered they didn't deliver to my area. It was a bad time. The stall lied. School bathroom with a phone number in sharp. Written above it said sucks dck for free. I started typing it into text but I realized it was my own phone number. High school kids are brutal. Called the number. Went on a date. It was successful. Would recommend 10 stroke 10. As crazy as it sounds I texted a number off a bathroom stall in a movie theater in Texas when I was visiting family. I made some shitty joke. And then told them I got their number off of a wall. Somehow it turned into a full on conversation and that was how I met the first love of my life. We were together for over a year and it's just crazy to think it all transpired because I texted a number off of a bathroom stall. That was about 6 years ago and I haven't seen or talked to Kaylee in years but it's still a pretty cool story to tell people. I texted the number while I was drunk, usually. Sober. I wouldn't. The same day. The woman called the police and reported me for harassment. Even though I only texted her saying hi and telling her that her number was on a bathroom wall. Does the story count if the phone number was sharpied down the side of the CCK that came through the wall? Before my senior year of high school I was a camp counselor at a week long camp in the Pocono area. There was a number in the craft cabin and I texted it. The guy was confused about it for a second and then laughed when he remembered writing it. And then I accidentally mentioned that it was a girls camp and he hit on me and I blocked him. Edit. Should also mention that he told me he was less than an hour away and that really freaked me out. Not quite a bathroom stall but my family was out hiking and we found a number carved into the wooden guardrail. My sister called it and pretended to be a forest agent, probably not the right name for them. She told the girl that the state was pressing charges against her for destruction of public property. The girl started crying. My sister started laughing. And she hung up the phone. Not me calling but a friend. And not a bathroom stall but a similar number MSG carved into a beam. In line for a roller coaster. My friend calls this phone number. For a good time. And asks if he can have a good time. The person who wrote the number was a teenager. The person who picked up the phone was her grandmother. The look on his face was priceless. My cousin met her boyfriend since 3 years by calling a number of a bathroom wall. It said something like. For a good time call 07xxxxxxxxxx she texted out of curiosity. Apparently one of his friends had put his name and number down there just to mess with him. 
He usually had guys sending him D pics and shti and was considering changing number. They texted back and forth for over 6 months until they met up. They now live together and seem happy. If they ever ends up getting married and have kids they will have quite a story to tell about how they met. When I was in uni I messaged a number on the wall of a bathroom stall. A guy and his friend both came and... Well. Came. And left. It was exhilarating. Got tested immediately and later and never did it again but was hottest sx I've had ever. Found a number written on some of those giant wooden jingo blocks at a bar once. I start dialing. And my friend I was playing against was looking at me like. Dude WTF. It goes to voicemail so I start talking about how lonely I am and how I was just hoping that I could have a good time in the most embarrassing voice ever. At this point my friend is completely confused. Until I finish with. Look me up on Facebook. My name is. Friends name. That is. Friends. Name. Wasn't a caller but the recipient of many calls. When I was a teenager. Some friends of mine were competing in a school competition against hundreds of schools from across the country. This is an event that happens yearly and, and attracts a lot of national attention. My friends being the smart asses they are printed my name and number and with a typical call for hot sex line. Or something to that effect. Over the course of the day I received I must have gotten upwards of 50 phone calls and text messages. Teenagers think they are hilarious. To top it off my phone number made it to the 6pm national news. Towards the end of the event. One random student was being interviewed. So smart ass friend decided to write my name. Number and call me on a A4 sheet of paper and stood in shot during the interview. I was once really high with a friend and called the number spray painted on the side of a dumpster with the name Yolanda. We wanted to let her know that someone spray painted her name and number on a dumpster at our local shopping center. A lady answered with a heavy Spanish accent who proceeded to yell at the both of us because it was her dumpster. What the fck is the matter with you? That's my fking dumpster. The rest was in Spanish in what I assume was an endless stream of expletives. That was the first and last time I called a number like that. I didn't even know people could own dumpsters. Jeez. 17 years old. Was at the park with some of my friends and this bench was covered in numbers. So we took our time trying to get through all of the numbers. The majority of them went to voicemail and led us nowhere but the last number we called said call for a great meal. Comma. We were like yeah boys one of us is gonna get some so we proceeded to call up the number. Only to find that my mate's phone rang who was a straight A catering student at the time. Was really surprised the note was truthful. Answered a call from a girl who said she found my phone number on a piece of drywall as she was tearing down wallpaper labeled good pat. My name is in fact pat. And I have no idea who lived in that house before she did. I wasn't friends with anyone in that part of town. Nor what I did to differentiate myself from any potential bad pats. We ended up going out to dinner. And hung out a few times after that. Nothing ever really came of it. But kind of weird. I started getting calls from unknown people asking about baby cows and how much were they. Couple of weeks later my classmate confessed he posted an ad, selling baby cows, in newspaper with my number. I saw a message carved into a door saying PLS I need help before the 12th of April 2014 because it was the 10th I took it as my duty to help this person out. It was a guy about 20 years of age asking me what kind of present he should buy for his girlfriend's birthday. Which was on the 13th. I told him to go with chocolate and roses. Received a message on the 13th saying it worked dude. Thank you very much that was the last time I heard from him. My friend travels for a living and she writes my number followed by something filthy in women's bathrooms at bars. I get 4-6ish phone calls per week from drunk girls. It's usually pretty funny. Every now and then it turns into a drunken facetime. In the 4 years she's been doing it I've gotten to see I think 5 sets of hooters. Not mad about that. Once. My friends called one of the numbers. It was some kind of a pizza delivery restaurant. My friends made fun of them. And I don't know what exactly they said. 
but the police called 10 minutes later saying that someone bomb threatened the restaurant in the past through a phone. Then the police came to investigate. Everything was okay. But it was kinda scary as we were like 12 stroke 13. Don't do numbers. Kids. Freshman year in college there was a movie event during what we called the welcome weekend. There was a bunch of beach balls being tossed around and I decided to write my number on it. About a minute later I got a call. It was a girl and they were actually sitting like 4 groups away. They looked at our group. Hung up. Never looked back. Hurts man. Was all geared up to go fishing and stopped on the trail to use the restroom before hiking out. It had a number with a lot of names including cum guzzler so I called it. They asked where I was from. Etc. I told her the truth. She was mad at me and didn't believe the number was where I said I had found it at. Somewhat related. An old friend wrote my number at a bus stop and some girls started texting me. We talked for a while. Made plans to meet. Then she sent me some nudes one drunken night. I guess she felt ashamed afterwards. Because we stopped talking after that. When I was 18. I texted a number that I found written in sharpie onto a pebble on the beach. Miraculously the person texted back. And was apparently a 15 year old girl. We chatted shti for a while about the joys of underage drinking, though being British I could now drink legally. And after a while the conversation petered out and we never texted again. Programming class 11th grade. Nameless number texts me hexadecimal during class while our internet privileges were cut. I waited until the teacher wasn't looking and typed it in on my phone manually. Which came up with. Binary. Few more minutes of typing and I decrypted that then it displayed this message two rows behind you. Do you want to go out? Dated her for a year before moving out of state. Right before I left I asked her how she got my turns out she found it in a bathroom stall written by my buddies. I once texted a friend and got the response of Emily changed her number. Why do I have to keep telling you this? Which was confusing to me because I had never texted her before. I apologized and said I didn't realize. Then the next day I received a good morning text from this person. I was confused because of how hostile they had been previously. So I said. I thought you and Emily. They responded I send all of my friends good morning texts and I figured I'd send one to you too. For the next week they texted me every morning to say good morning. Not on a bathroom stall but a number that was scribbled on a bus seat. My friends and I were in primary school at the time so we were like. Why the hell not? Double quote. No answer at first but the number called back. It sounded like a dirty old man. Never again. I was stuck in southern Wisconsin on a work project and was stuck in a hotel for months. A certain burger shop had a cork board where people could draw or color and tack up their work. I saw a nicely written message that read something to the effect of Hi I'm, girl's name, and I'm single and ready to mingle. Sent a text message but after a little back and forth found out she was too young for me. Here in Lexington. Kai there is a famous Mike whose phone number was written in every woman's restroom stall in town sometime in the 80s or early 90s. Even as a guy I knew about it from going out with my female friends. One time a group of us were in a Denny's and a woman and the group came back from the restroom and mentioned that Mike was there too. This was in the earliest days of cell phones and my early adopter friend decided we should give the guy a call. He called Mike and it turned out it really was the number for a Mike and somehow he was oblivious to the fact that his number was in every female restroom in central Kentucky. We called back about 6 months later and the number had been disconnected. So either we weren't the last of the calls or he didn't want to take any chances. Later I even saw someone walking around with a call Mike shirt with the phone number on it. This is most likely gonna get buried but a few years ago I was having my birthday celebrations in a bar and everyone was extremely drunk. One of my mates found a number on the back of a men's bathroom door and decided to ring it. It was a guy who wanted to meet up for sex. My mate outlined what he was wearing. Instead describing another friend who was present, and told the guy to meet him at the bar we were drinking at. The bloke agreed. My mate let everyone. 
Bar my other friend. Know about the prank. No one thought this guy would actually show up. An hour or so later. This real greasy. Creepy looking guy in his late 30s shows up and walks up to my clueless friend. Asking him if his name was X. My friend confirms his identity. The guy spends the next few hours flirting with my extremely confused mate. Trying to get him to go back to his place. My drunken friend completely misread the situation. Thinking he had made a new. Albeit slightly creepy. New mate. This eventually culminated with the bloke offering my mate a shag in the toilets. My mate running away and the bloke eventually leaving wearing a sparkly birthday hat. I did feel sorry for the guy but it was absolutely hilarious. Something like 2 years ago I got a random call from some chick in a city about 3-4 hours from where I live. Said she found my number on a matchbox. Never been to that city. Don't know anyone who lives there. Confession from a number writer. I was in Austin for SXSW. And I was drinking in this bar where they had giant Jenga sets on the tables. On one of the pieces. I wrote call xxxxxxxxxxxx and say fuck yeah Jenga. Double quote. For the next couple of weeks. I got calls at random times from people saying fuck yeah Jenga. I just yell fuck yeah. Back and hang up. I assume I brought some bizarre joy into their lives. The calls abruptly stopped. As the piece must have been cleaned or lost. I dialed the number to alert them that someone, probably their son, had scribbled their number on the bathroom wall and tagged it with for a good time call xxxxxxxxx this was in a high school bathroom. They said thanks. I haven't seen a number or wrote one but I did once find graffiti in a church toilet that said we love god that someone altered to say we love Godzilla. It is a god family movie. I found a number on a wall at a bar, not in a bathroom though, that this girl's friend had left. So I texted it informing her. We chatted. And she asked for proof so I snapped a picture of it and sent it to her. She gave me her friend's number to replace hers. I swapped them. Sent her a picture as proof. Gotten lol thanks. Comma. And told each other to have a fun and safe night. And that's probably the most boring story you'll read in this thread. I worked with a guy that would use this as revenge on his bosses. He would write their numbers on bathroom stalls in warmets. Etc. The managers would eventually have to get their numbers changed because of all the weirdness calling them all night and day. Apparently PPL would call 3 in the morning breathing heavy in the phone and all kinds of things like that. Just constantly lol. Years ago I lived near some windmills and on one of the windmills there was a phone number I took it down and saved the number as windmill. Never called it or anything but more recently added it on Snapchat through the add from contacts option and it turns out to be a fine looking woman named Cheryl. One time I was at a rugby match and we had found one of those for a good time. Call xxxxxxxxxxxx on the wall of a portage John. Being dumb teenager dudes. We decided to give it a call. Joke was on us. It was the local police station. I didn't call the number. But in the train I used to take daily. It had Emma 18 blonde bombshell. Call. Number. For good time in the bathroom. I took a different train a couple of months later around the area. And what did I see but Emma 19 blonde bombshell. Call. Number. For good time. I just thought to myself. Ha. Huh. Happy birthday Emma while I was whizzing. Came home from work one day and looked at my caller ride and I had missed a call from Dale Earnhardt. As I was a NASCA fan and went to a race now and then. I thought I must I have won some kind of contest or something. I excitedly called the number back and found out that the call had been a misdialed call from a tourist who was renting a beach house a couple of towns over. And the house was owned by Dale Earnhardt, this was before he died. I was in Melbourne Australia recently visiting friends. While drunkenly stumbling around back alleys off of Ligon Street I found a ball with what looked like a red lipstick kiss. Under the kiss was a phone number. I sent a txt to the number with a sexy picture of my 24 year old manly self. Captioned found a ball with this number. Thought the kiss looked sexy. Comma I got a reply back almost instantly this is my daughter's ball. 
she is 7 years old. A disgruntled ex decides to post my number every now and then online and ask for DCK pics. Based on the number I've received I would bet at least one of you has texted me before.